Now, uh, after noting that you are present, <clears throat> and it is important that everybody attends our lessons, because we are not going to repeat these lessons. You know, syllabus coverage is very important, and we want to undo the syllabus as quickly as possible now that you are in Form 4, so that we may start our revision. Now, welcome to our lesson five, uh, Riddling Session. Uh, the start of riddles is under what we call short forms. Short forms. We have the long forms, which are uh, the long forms. We have the long forms which are songs, narratives, narratives. Prominently, we have the songs and the narratives. And the short forms, we have the riddles, the riddles, the puns, the tongue twisters, the, the, the proverbs. Proverbs, they are brief, they are very brief forms of oral literature. Now, when we talk about riddles, we start from the definition of a riddle, and then we end with the performance of a riddle and the functions of a riddle. Now, uh, the riddling session is studied in form one, and the riddle itself but it cuts across from Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, and then Form 4. You meet the full extent of the study of the riddle. Now, what features prominently with the riddle is the metaphor in the riddle. The metaphor in the riddle. Meaning that the riddle is metaphoric. The riddle is metaphoric. What is a metaphor? A metaphor is when you use an object to describe another object. You want to hide meaning behind an object in the description of another object. So the early definitions of a riddle identify the riddle with a metaphor. The early definitions of riddles are not just calm have not just come, they've been there. Oral literature transcends from one generation to another. So the early definitions of a riddle identify the riddle with a metaphor. What do I mean? That to describe a fact in an impossible combination of words, which cannot be done with the real names, here you have a, a combination of words. You want to describe a certain fact. You want to describe a certain fact which cannot be done with the real names for things, but can be with their metaphorical substitutes. With their metaphorical substitutes. For example, Tamu, Taluma, Mlango, Wachuma, Ukiufungua, Hauna, Huruma. Look at that description, for example. Here we have a fact that is an impossible combination of words which cannot be done with the real names for things that can be with their metaphorical substitutes. Whatever you see here is an extent, a big, a large extent of a meta combination of words that are metaphorical metaphorical tamu taluma here we have mlango wa chuma 
mlango wa chuma ukiufungua hauna huruma this is the first metaphor and this is the second metaphor which means that like a proverb a riddle being metaphorical we don't derive the meaning of the words that we or the meaning of the of the of the riddle from the words that are formed it what is the linguistic or the english translation of this metaphor look sweet technology sweet technology a door of steel once opened shows no mercy tam taluma mlango wa chuma ukiufungua hauna huruma sweet technology a door of steel once opened shows no mercy that is the translation up to here we have not uncovered the meaning of this riddle i only want to to, to show you that a door here the the author of this riddle is talking about a door of steel once opened no mercy this is a figure of speech it needs a further description you need to uncover what the riddle is talking about now for the facts we want to describe a fact that there is that the technology is so sweet that the doors we used to are doors made of wood that is sweet technology now we have a door made of steel that is now technology technology has taken us to a level where we have a door of steel and that door is not an ordinary door it's a door that once opened shows no mercy a door is supposed to be an instrument of hospitality an instrument of welcoming an instrument of friendship you open the door you come in but look at this particular door once opened shows no mercy and the answer i'll uncover the answer at the end of this lesson now the riddle in the strict sense compares an object to another entirely different object like we've seen in this riddle a riddle in the strict sense very strictly a riddle compares an object to an entirely different object once we uncover the meaning of this riddle here and the other riddles that you have for example my house has no door answer an egg you see like an, like an egg like a house the egg has contents inside but here is a situation where it has no door therefore an egg and that, that is an object and this is another object a, a riddle in the strict sense compares an object to another entirely different object however a riddle gives clues so that whoever reads them can discover the answer that is why we have uh, whatever is allowed like here we accept the riddle or the riddler accepts intelligent intelligent guesses a riddler we have the riddler and the respondent the riddler accepts intelligent guesses why the riddle gives you a clue there are clues mulango wa chuma there you think along that line a door of steel 
once opened, there is opening. There is that clue. You are given the clue. You are not left blind. Sweet technology. It is something out of technology, not something that is traditional. It is from what we already know that from the mundane situation, from the ordinary setup, we know a door is made of wood. If it is made of steel, that is technology. Once open, there is opening of that door and there is the showing of no mercy. Uh, therefore, it is important to know that the clues are very important. It is the clues that lead to the intelligent guesses. Uh, uh, those who read can discover the answer, of course, after some guesses, but the humor in them is to miss out. That what is the underlying humor? Because uh, uh, predominantly, we know that riddles were set to entertain. How do you entertain when there is no humor? The humor in the riddle is to miss. If you get, you get the answer straight, there is no humor. There is no comic effect. So, entertainment is lost. Now, the study introduces an original way of referencing riddle acts that specifies individual audience. Riddles were made for certain audiences, not everybody. Riddles were not for adults, they were for children. It was a play thing. Uh, it was for entertainment among children. Participants as the authors and co-authors of the riddle text. By naming audience participants in the riddle performance, records authorship is emphasized and the authority of the riddle in their specific context of performance is reinforced. Now, there is need to depart from the usual practice of pulling riddles presidents, uh, presidents out of context and listing them as authorless texts without origin. Now, it is important that uh, riddles have what we call authority, the author of the riddle, who is coming uh, in to prepare this riddle. Sequence of the acts, the stages, reveal that riddling was a discourse with meaningful and coherent speech patterns. In other words, the riddles were not haphazard, as you may see in this riddle below. We have the challenger or the riddler, the challenger. That is the conventional way of performing, of uh, staging a riddle. It has the stages, which we may look after the reading this riddle. Riddle, riddle, the respondents say, riddle, calm. Then the challenger says, I have a wife who never returns to where she came from. Look at that riddle and try to figure out what is the riddler or what is the challenger talking about? How would you respond to that riddle? Riddle, riddle, riddle come. That is like a rapport. They are striking a rapport. I talked of a, a rapport here. Rapport is that cordial relationship. How do you come in? How do you introduce? How do you start? How do you draw the attention of the audience? Riddle, riddle. And then, riddle, come. He may say, another conventional way of saying it, I have a riddle. Bring it on. I have a riddle, bring it on. So whenever you see such introductions, then you know the riddler or the challenge or the riddling session has come. Riddle, riddle, riddle come. I have a wife who never returns to where she came from. That arrangement, a challenger, may have the word riddler, respondent, and then we have challenger. Then we have respondent, the water 
in a stream. That is our guess. It is an intelligent guess. Why? Water doesn't return where it comes from. But that is not the answer that the riddler or the challenger has in mind. Therefore, he or she says no. Another guess, a baby from the womb. How can the baby be the answer? The challenger says, incorrect, my dear. Then the respondent says, okay, give us the answer. Not unless you give me a reward. Not unless you give me a um, city. Sometimes they go straight into naming the reward that they want so they may give the answer. And then the challenger says, good, ready for the answer? Yes, the answer is the leaf of a tree. Now, what are the stages of the above riddling session? Stages. These are ordinary, they, they are documented stages of a riddle. Anytime you are given a riddle, that is how you approach it. And that's how you go with one invitation. The first stage of the riddling session is invitation. The challenger invites the respondents to a riddle by using an opening riddle, riddle. That is invitation. That is what I was calling the rapport. Invitation. From the word invite, the respondent is being invited by the challenger. The challenger invites the respondent to a riddle by using an opening to. That is, that is called uh, the, the formula a riddle, riddle. I, I have said that already. And then acceptance, that is stage number two. Acceptance where the respondent accepts the invitation by answering, riddle, come. So we have invitation. Second, we have acceptance. The challenger invites the respondent to a riddle by using an opening. That opening formula is riddle, riddle. Here, you answer according to the text that you've been given. That was the question. How do you arrive at the stages of the above riddle? So you go, if it started, I have a riddle. That is how you say it. The formula is, I have a riddle. But here the formula was, riddle, riddle. Then the acceptance as the second stage. You may have them called stages of riddling session. You may have them called uh, steps. Steps. But stages is more common. The respondent accepts the invitation by answering riddle, come. Then we have proposition. Proposition from the word propose. The riddle is being proposed. Okay, proposition. Sometimes it is called the riddle. So you may have proposition. If you can't remember that word, you can say the riddle. The challenger poses a riddle. That is step number three or stage number three. I have a wife who never returns to where she came from. That is the illustration. If you are in the exam setup, you could say proposition. Then you say, or the challenger poses a riddle. And then you illustrate by saying, I have a riddle. I have a wife who never returns. Like you've seen in the first cases, invitation, the challenger invites the respondents to a riddle by using opening formula. And then you illustrate that opening formula there, riddle, riddle. Then you go to the second, acceptance. The respondent accepts the invitation by answering riddle come. If you do that, your answer is perfect.
then you come to the third stage proposition from the word propose that is the riddle once you've written the word proposition you have no need of writing again the riddle you say the riddle if you cannot remember proposition if you don't look at that word properly you may think we are talking about preposition that's the word you are used to we are saying proposition from the word propose the challenger poses a riddle pause riddles are posed narratives are told or narrated okay proverbs are said you say a proverb you pose a riddle you narrate a story you recite a poem so the challenger poses a riddle how i have a i have a wife who never returns to where she came from then we have another the fourth one is the guesses that is a stage where the respondent attempts to get the answer right attempts that word is very prominent there the respondents attempt to get the answer right the respondents attempt to get the answer right why they are not the answers they are guesses that is why we are using the word attempt how look at that we have one attempt then we have second attempt make them two first attempt no second attempt no my dear that was what we saw in that discourse there first attempt or first guess no second incorrect then give us the answer then you go to the prize the prize here under the prize if they fail after a few attempts make them two if they fail after two attempts the challenger may ask for a prize or a reward give me a reward a prize give me a reward or a prize which he or she accepts so he must or she must accept and then go straight to the answer then goes straight to the answer then he gives the answer to the riddle so what do you think is likely to take place after this particular riddling session what do you think takes place after a story has been told what do you think takes place after a song has been sung now what do you think takes place after a proverb has been given and the answer has been given what do you think takes place after a riddling session the answers are documented for example one the respondent would clap that is applaud the respondent would clap applaud two the change of roles with one of the respondents now challenging change of roles we after this let us have so and so giving us a, her riddle or his riddle that is change of roles now the challenger becomes the respondent and the respondent becomes the challenger that is a possible end of this session what comes after this session this is a particular uh, 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 what we call a, a particular uh, riddling session it has ended once it has ended what happens there is clapping or applauding or there may be change of roles there might be change of roles three it could be a prelude i want to use this word three 
prelude. Prelude. Prelude is what comes before. Here you have a, na a narrative to give. What do you do before that narrative? There is the word prelude to. Prelude to the narrative. What comes before? You can give a riddle before you tell a story. You can give a proverb before you tell a story. You can give a saying. Why saying? Before you give a narrative. You can also sing a song. Before you do what? Before you give a narrative. That is what we call prelude. Prelude to a narrative. So when we have a narrative session, like now the telling of a story, a narrative, telling of a story, a riddle may come beforehand. So what comes after this riddling session? We may have a narration of a story. We may have also singing. You may sing after a riddling session. I hope you followed very strictly. <coughs> that was an insight to the outside uh, a larger picture of the short forms of oral literature. Ours today was the riddling session, right from the definition of the riddling session, of a riddle, uh, the metaphor in the riddle, and then the stages of a riddle and what comes after the riddle that we have seen here as we may end now. But before we end, I promise that I'll give you, I'll give you the answer or respond to this. See technology, a door of steel once opened shows no mercy. I hope you've been guessing the answer, but the answer is a gun. One, a gun is made of steel, a gun is opened, and a gun shows no mercy. It kills. Thank you for listening. Go to your WhatsApp groups, get, get a link there, go to Google Forms, answer the questions that are there to the remaining part of the hour.